Hello, I'm Bishop Daniel Muggenberg, and I would like to reflect with you on the scripture passage that you will hear when you come to Mass this Sunday, and we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We return now to the Gospel of Mark, um, and from chapter 7, when we hear about Jesus um, responding to the Pharisees and scribes who criticized the disciples because they ate their meals with unclean or unwashed hands. Now, one of the things that Jesus wants us to understand, especially as disciples, is the nature of religious laws. And I say that because, first of all, not all laws are equal. Some are more important than others, and that is why Jesus offers us the greatest commandment. But Jesus also wants us to understand that religious laws have a purpose. And it isn't our blind obedience to laws that um, makes them beneficial for us, but rather it is our ability to understand and to esteem the good that laws are trying to promote that allows us to really um, fulfill them in, in a way that benefits us spiritually. So laws are meant to safeguard and protect what is good for us especially in our relationship with God and our relationship with others. So some of the laws um, dealt with um, commandments that required certain actions, while others prohibited actions that could be detrimental to the good. And so laws kind of served as this check and balance system that when we found ourselves or when we find ourselves violating a certain law, we need to step back and say something may be wrong. I may be doing something that is harmful to myself or others or injurious of my relationship with God. And I, I know that because I have crossed this boundary that we call a law. So that's where Jesus wants to keep the laws within a certain priority of perspective. So that's important when we come to the purity laws, because the purity laws, washing one's hands, were really meant to um, promote communion with God and communion with neighbor. But whenever those same laws start to become a source of division and comparison and condemnation and judgmentalism, as we see happening in this passage, then those laws have really become distorted and have now been used contrary to their original intended purpose, which was to foster communion, not division. So Jesus wants us to maintain that consciousness of the purpose of laws, or we will end up using laws like a wet towel, just as the scribes and Pharisees did in today's passage. That really in invites us to think about um, how it is that we um, are able to recognize what is good within a particular law and not become caught up by simply blind observance to it. Again, if we're going to receive spiritual benefit from our following of religious regulations, then we need to understand that benefit and we need to consciously be seeking that benefit or the laws simply become nothing, nothing but, 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 but blind conformancy. Um, so, one of the other things that Jesus wants to point out in this particular passage is whenever we mistake our priorities, all right, and he uses this by contrasting human precepts um, from divine commandments. Um, in this particular passage, you know, Jesus is talking about how uh, tempting it is to disregard the commandments of God in favor of human doctrines. Um, Jesus wants us to maintain um, a particular um, category of priority in, in which we do keep first things first. And that's why he gave us the greatest commandment, which is to love God and our neighbor. Anytime particular rules or practices become a weapon with which we attack or condemn others, then we are in fact violating that greatest law, which is to love God and love our neighbor. Now, Jesus goes on even further to talk about the true nature of purity. 
um, because, of course, the disciples were being criticized for not practicing the purity laws of washing their hands. Now, in our world of Jesus, um, people commonly thought that purity came from external factors, such as the food that you ate, or maybe the people that you associated with, or maybe the area of the world that you lived in. You were more pure than others, simply because of those external factors. And what Jesus is doing in this particular gospel passage is correcting that misunderstanding to show that real purity is based on internal factors, not external factors and particularly those factors that affect our relationships with other people. As you notice, Jesus summarizes um, things like evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, uh, etc. These are all sins that in one way or another injure other people, all right? And so they affect our relationship with others. It isn't that Jesus is discounting the offense that we can cause to God by breaking religious laws. It's rather that Jesus is reminding us that whenever we come to God in prayer and we approach the Lord in that moment, that God is very conscious of how we have approached other people um, throughout our day. And so the Lord, the Lord wants us to understand that we defile ourselves by our intentional actions, our hurtful actions towards others. And with that, Jesus wants us to be pure, but he wants us to be pure based upon that moral rectitude within us. Um, so the letter of James that was read at today's Mass, this weekend's Mass, is a very good reminder of what authentic religion really does look like as we express it in our relationship with others. And so listen to the letter of James when you come to Mass this weekend, and I think that you will see how James does a beautiful job of connecting our love of God and our love of neighbor in an inseparable unity um, that really challenges us to avoid decisions of injustice, indifference, and selfishness, because those are the things that will render us impure. I do want to comment on one last um, detail of this particular gospel reading. It actually tells us that the Pharisees and scribes observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean hands. The actual word in Greek isn't meal. The actual word is bread. Ate their bread now, that might seem like a minor difference, but we need to remember that in Mark's gospel, there are a number of teachings that concern bread. And the vast majority of these teachings use the word bread in a very Eucharistic context. So it's very possible that this section of Mark's gospel is actually referring to um, a Eucharistic setting in which some disciples, not all disciples, notice, but some um, participate and, 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 and are engaged in the experience of Eucharist in a different way than others are. And that is causing division uh, and judgmentalism as people are pointing out the differences in that some do it, some don't do it this way. Whenever we find ourselves experiencing a diversity um, or even a divergence of actions, it can be very easy to become judgmental and comparing of others who aren't doing the same thing we're doing in the same way that we're doing it. Anytime that we find that tendency arising within us to judge others based on their particular ritualistic practices, that, that means that we are giving in to the same tendency as the Pharisees and the scribes. On the other hand, this passage also tells us <clears throat> that whenever we are choosing to act in a way different from others in the context of the liturgy, that we are actually bringing in um, division based upon our diverse practices and actions. And the division itself 
um, is something that wounds the community and actually fosters this type of comparison. So I think that Jesus is wanting us to be very conscious of, first of all, what we're doing, all right? Because again, he doesn't want us just following rules for the sake of following rules, but he wants us to be conscious of, of, of what's the core value that we're pursuing. And what's, how are we expressing that in our concrete actions? Secondly, Jesus wants us to be very concerned about why we're doing it. You know, again, actions in themselves can be meaningless. It's when we perform our actions or we carry out our actions with a clear intentionality that they are an expression of our love of God and neighbor, that they become meaningful and can actually help us grow in virtue and holiness. Jesus also wants us to be conscious of how we're doing it. There's value in having uniform practices, especially when we are eating our bread, the bread of life, the Eucharist. Having a uniform practice allows us to worship together in a way that is not distractive um, or divisive. And Jesus, most of all, wants us to be conscious of for whom are we doing these things, all right? Are we doing them for ourselves, to make ourselves look holier, to make ourselves look better, to make others feel guilty? Or are we doing these for God? That changes a lot of our own attitude. Because when we truly are carrying out our actions for the Lord, then we will approach them with greater reverence, greater solemnity, greater piety, and we'll certainly be less focused on others and how they are expressing themselves through their actions. And I think that that's what Jesus wants. Jesus wants a community that gathers in worship, um, that experiences a, a communion, um, while at the same time having a deep appreciation for, um, for, for the, 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 the very presence of one another, especially when that does involve some type of diversity. So let's pray that we can learn from the, um, the negative example of the scribes and the Pharisees and that we can be a community that helps one another um, experience purity in our Christian life and in our Christian worship. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you desire that our celebration of the Eucharist always be a source of our communion with God and neighbor and never the cause of our division. We pray that through this gospel passage that you will remove from us the judgmental, the condemnatory, and the comparison tendencies that we have and that you will instill within us that priority of love of God and neighbor that always seeks to focus on you rather than one another. We ask this in Christ's name, amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.